hey everybody welcome back to another video and today's video is the second part or i would say the first part of building the to-do app in the previous one we set up our project with wheat and we pretty much did nothing else so in today's video we are going to build the home page so this is the complete to-do app which is fully functional what we are going to do is we are going to build just the home page it's just the markup or just the html in this one and this cool little animation as well so right now this is what we have we just put hello tw when we finished setup tailwind so first of all let's work on the layout so getting back to our code we have our html file where we are going to spend most of our time right now and in the main.js, all we do is we import the style.css, nothing else, nothing special. So if we have this h1, let's get rid of this h1 altogether. First of all, we are going to give the body some classes. So if you look right over here, we have a different background. We don't have the normal white background. So this is going to have the class of BG gray 200. So this is the background that we are going to give to the whole body. And next up, we're going to cre create a div where we're going to store everything. So this div is going to be the container div. So we're going to have container and MX auto. Now, if you are wondering how I get this IntelliSense, this happens with the extension called Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. So if you just go ahead in extensions and if you search for Tailwind, this is a must have extension for every Tailwind user. All right, so let's uh, close this up. So we have tail uh, container and MX auto. And what that will do is it will just have some spacing for the container. So if I just say, well, hey, uh, hello, I just placed something inside of here. You'll see that there is some space right over here in, in this part. So that's what we need. Now, once we have this, we are going to create one more div and inside of and this div, we are going to give it a class of H screen or height screen. What this will do is it will give it will assign the height for this particular div to the whole viewport height. All right, so next up we are going to have a form tag. Now, I'll remove the action right over here. Why do we have a form tag? So if you look close enough, this is just an input and a button. But the thing is, if we have an on-click event on the button in the JavaScript, this is just going to trigger the submit when the button is clicked this is just going to add so if i just say hello and if i hit add this adds a to do but what we also want to do is if i say hello and if i hit enter that should also add the to do so that is why we have the form tag and the form tag will help us do that easily and quickly so let's get rid of both of these and let's go back in here so we are going to have the normal form tag inside of the form tag we are going to have an input and we are going to have a button now let's give this form an ID of to do form and then we will go to this input and we'll give it a name of to do input. You can name it anything you want but it's just my preference to name this to do form and give it a name. I'll explain in the JavaScript part why we gave it the name. Next up we are going to give this button a name of submit btn nothing much and that's the the id and the name part is for the javascript so if you don't want to add javascript if you just want to build the markup you can skip these things next up we'll go inside of the button and we'll add the text of add that's what we are going to write in there save this and you go back and you see this input and the add button nothing much nothing fancy this is what we have and we can just get rid of these so when I click on the button, the page refreshes and we don't want that behavior. So we're going to handle that in JavaScript later on. First of all, let's just style this. Okay, so now we are going to style our input tag, which right now looks very simple and has not, no styles whatsoever. So as I told you in the first video, we are using Flowbyte and Flowbyte provides you great input tags. I mean, great input styles. You can actually pick from a lot of these. They have a lot of options in their input field and they also have some options in the search input. So like if you have, if you want to build something like a search box, you can do that as well. And one of the uh, greatest thing is that they provide you with the styles like with the tailwind classes so you have the whole control over each and every one so what we're going to do is we're going to pick a simple input nothing fancy just a simple input from these and because our main focus is the javascript part tailwind the styling designing is also good but our main focus is javascript because that's going to be a lot of code so all you're going to do is we're going to just pick a normal input i'll just take this one and 
going back into our code we'll just paste this right over here now it has an id and all what we are going to do is we are just going to replace this with a name and to do input and we can get rid of this altogether now it has a placeholder which in our case we'll put what to do let's just write what to do and it's a required one going back this is what we get back what to do this looks great but we don't have a spacing altogether so we're going to fix that as well now let's style this button so in here this is how the button looks like and even the button we i picked up from flowbyte so i'll just go ahead and search for buttons and they have a lot of options in these buttons they have gradients and whatnot they have a lot of these things so you can pick anything you want but i'm just going to pick up the default button and let's just do that i'll just so this is how long the button styles are but don't need to worry about that let's go back in here and i'll just add i'll just place the button right over here now instead of writing default i'll just say add and we are going to also put the name so name is submit btn pretty cool and we can get rid of this add button now the only difference is that this has the type of button we don't need to get into the type of button because if we do that our form won't be submitted when we click on this button so we have to give this a type of submit or we can also skip this because this is the only button inside the form so this will be the type of submit by default i'll save this going back to the app this is how it looks like now this looks pretty ugly compared to what we have right over here so let's change this a little bit i'll just go inside of the form because the form contains the input and the button so we need to style the form as well now we are going to use flexbox in here so hang around we are just going to say class we're going to give it the class of flex which will put these things side by side so i just move this on the right and this to the left i hope you can see this properly so we put flex and now they are side by side this is what we wanted right next up we are going to put items center which is align item center and if we hit save on that these two will be aligned on the center vertically and then we're going to put justify center which will justify them sent which will align them horizontally centered then we're going to have a gap of five and then finally we're going to have a padding of six which will make it look a lot more better now there's a few things we need to change i'll go inside the button and i'll say text xl and what that will do is it will increase the size of the text and so it collides with the text sm so what we need to do is we just get rid of text sm and now our text is larger we can go ahead inside of the input and we can do the same thing so it will say text xl and hit save and this is how it looks like again this collides with text sm so we'll just get rid of text sm altogether now for some reason these are not being aligned vertically centered even though we have items center in there so let's debug this problem and see why this happens so if i go inside of here we have in the dev tools we have this flex which shows us that how this looks like so right now there is some problem in the button that makes it smaller so what we can do is we can get rid of this and let's go inside of the button and you see there is a little bit of orange lining around the button and that is because of the mr2 and mb2 which means it has some margin so what we can do is we can go ahead inside the button if we look ahead we have the mr2 and mb2 which means margin right and margin bottom so we can get rid of both of these hit save and now this looks perfect all right so now it is totally accurate as we have right over here now let's build this part and it is fairly simple so all we have to do is we have to get out of this form tags so let's take let's take this one and then outside of this form tag we have to create one more div and this div is going to have an id of no to do's now why an id of no to do's because we want to show this part only when there are no to do's right over here so we give it an id of no to do's and we can toggle between showing and not showing this whenever there are to do's and there are no to do's and additionally let's give it a padding of six for just convenience so that it has some spacing around it then we are going to have one more div and this is going to be the flex container but let's not style this at first let's see how we got this animation so this animation comes from lottie files now i already have a video on lottie files with which all you can do is you can just import their cdn and then use their web component to add any animation you want if you want to learn more about lottie files i already have a video up top but for now what we're going to do is we're just going to search for lottie files and we can just install 
we can just put it inside of our app so you can search for any animation you want i'll just search for let's say a uh, floating head i can you know you can just search for anything you want and that will give you a lot of animations made by the community and also by lottie files themselves now i already picked up an animation if i just search for zzz i think this will give me uh, the animation that i have chosen right now so this is the one but this is not the exact same animation that i picked up so let's just search for uh, no notifications something like that so there are lots of these you can pick anything you want for some reason i cannot find mine so let's just stick to this one this one looks pretty good to me so what you can do is if you want to integrate this you can just copy this url and let's get back and what we can do is we can just go inside of code and then there's this web player so let's open this in a new tab now what we can do is that it will show us a demo of how we can integrate this first of all let's just change this url and i'll paste mine so this is how it look like this also has a player so we don't want the control so we can just check out the controls now we want to auto play and we want to loop as well and i guess that's it that's all we need so what we can do is we can just and add this script tag so i'll just copy this go back to our code and we can just paste the script tag right up here now why the script tag right up here because we want this lottie file script to load before everything else going back we can just add this web component inside of our app so i'll just go inside of this div and i'll paste this like so and if we go right over here this is how it looks like i think this one looks better than this one anyway so we'll just stick to this one all right next up we have this text it's a good day no to do is left so i'm just going to copy this and i'm going to go below the lottie player and i'll just place an h2 and i'll just paste this right over here this is how it looks like so let's style these things a little bit i'll just going i'll just go in here and i'll add the class for h2 and i'll say text is going to be 3xl and the font is going to be semi bold so let's just do that real quick and this looks perfect right now this everything is aligned on the left so if we want to align everything to the center what we can do is we can go ahead inside of this div let's give it a class of flex which will align these two side by side but we don't want them side by side so we can give this a flex of call and that's going to align them back to the original position now we can go ahead and say items center again to just align them properly in horizontally because now we have flex column not flex row so our item center is going to align them horizontally and then we're going to add a gap of one so that they have some spacing in between now if you look closely in the lottie player in the lottie player we have this source this is the url this is the url to the json file and this is the json data for that animation i also have the url to the old animation this animation if we want this to be in here i'll just quickly copy and paste this so i'll just copy this and i'll comment this out i'll just say wait a minute i'll just go ahead and say src is going to be this one uh, for some reason html commenting does not go well so we will just uh, we'll just remove this all together so let's just do that now this is how it looks like this is the normal one we can keep this but let's keep it a, a little bit more funkier so i'll just get rid of this one and this is how it looks like it's a good day no to do's left so that's it for our home page and we are done with the home page now all we need to do now is just guess get out of this no to do so i'll just collapse this and we're going to create one more empty div nothing inside of it we're going to it's going to be an empty div it's just going to have an id of to do's uh, because this is where we are going to store all of our to do's so that's it and let's add the styles for this one so we are going to say padding of six the width is going to be full and it's going to have flex and flex column and finally it's going to have a gap of four so right now this is an empty div which does not impact this web page and we're going to store all of our to do's inside of here now in the next video we are going to work on creating a new to do because we already have our interface set up so if this video helped you out please like it share it with others and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with this app and finally thanks for watching